In this video, we'll learn about using function notation to evaluate and solve functions. In the first example, we're working with the equation y equals 2x plus 5. Now notice, when we usually work with a function of this form, we're talking about x being the input and y being the output. So if x is the input and y is the output, I do notice that y is a function of x. I know that because every time I put in one x value, it could only result in one unique y value output. So for example, you might have worked with functions like this where you're asked to find y when x equals negative 3. To do that, you write y equals 2 times negative 3 plus 5 and so y equals negative 6 plus 5, or y equals negative 1. So when x equals negative 3, y equals negative 1. You could also be asked to find y when x equals 1. And again, you just plug in x equals 1 into the equation and solve for the value of y. y equals 2 times 1 plus 5, so y equals 2 plus 5. So y equals 7. This tells us that when x equals 1, y equals 7. Now this can be actually fairly confusing, especially when you're new to algebra. At first, we were told y equals 2x plus 5. That is, y is an output variable when you input a variable x y is equal to this expression, 2x plus 5. But then only a few moments later, I tell you y is negative 1. And then a few moments after that, I tell you that y is 7. That's kind of confusing. Is y 2x plus 5? Or is y negative 1? Or is y 7? Function notation can help us sort out the differences between y acting as a value and y acting as an output variable. It's going to write, instead, we use f of x equals 2x plus 5. Noting here that this is exactly the same thing as saying y equals 2x plus 5, but instead of using y, I let y equal f of x. I'm doing this, and it also, I'm doing this to note that y is a function of x, function of x, f of x. You input x, you input x to the function, it outputs f of x, it outputs y, f of x is y. But now, when I note it this way, and I use this notation, Instead of inputting x equals three, negative 3 and outputting a y, I can input x equals negative 3 and output f of negative 3. You still evaluate the problem in exactly the same way. This is negative 6 plus 5, so it's negative 1. But now I say f of negative 3 is negative 1. It's saying when x is negative 3, y is negative 1. f of negative 3 is negative 1. Similarly, as we said above, when x is 1, y is 7, now with function notation, we'll write f of 1. You're inputting 1 into f of x x is 1, and I plug that 1 in, and I get out 7. So f of 1 is 7. It's telling me when x is 1, y is 7. f of 1 is 7. y is 7 when x is 1. Let's try it again. If I say f of x equals 5 7 x minus 3, Again, f of x is the output y value. Find f of 21. So I plug in x is 21. 5 
over 7 times 21 is 15. So overall it's 12. F of 21 is 12. That's saying when x is 21, y is 12. F of 21 is 12. The function at x equals 21 is a y value of 12. Whereas note the difference here. We're asked to solve the equation f of x equals 21. That is saying y equals 21. Solving, if I told you y is 21, solve it to find x. So up in the original equation, we're replacing the f of x, the y, with 21. 21 equals 5 sevenths x minus 3. And we need to solve this equation for x. To solve for x, I add 3 on both sides. I get 24 equals 5 sevenths x. And then I multiply both sides by 7 over 5. So I have x equals 7 fifths times 24. So f of x equals 21 means that x equals 168 over 5. So if y equals 21, then x equals 168 over 5. Let's do the same thing, but instead this time we're given a table of values. We're told y equals f of x. And here's some input-output values. If we want to solve or evaluate each of the following, first we're asked if f of x equals 0, Notice what that's telling us. It's telling us y equals 0. So we want to find x. So I go to the table and I find where f of x equals 0, where y equals 0, and that's here. When y equals 0, x was 3. So if f of x equals 0, that means x equals 3. Whereas here, f of 0. Instead of f of x, it's f of 0. They're telling us the x is 0. So I go up to the table and I find here x is 0 means y is 6. So f of 0 is 6. Similarly, we could do the same sort of thing on a graph. We're given a graph up here of f of x, and we're given several points on the graph. In the first problem here, we want to solve where f of x equals 0, where y equals 0. Where is the height of the graph? That's the y values, the height. Where is the height 0? Well, I see two places that have a y value, height of 0. That occurs when x equals negative 3 and where x equals 8. Two different solutions. This time we're asked to find f of 0, so they're telling us x is 0. f of 0 is the y value when x is 0. So I go to the graph and I find where x is 0, and that's right here. When x is 0, y is 5. f of 0 is 5. f of x equals 2, that means y equals 2. Let's find x. So I go to the graph. I find where y equals 2. That happens here and here. So when x is 7 and when x is negative 2. When x is 7 and when x is negative 2. So if y equals 2, if f of x equals 2, that means x is 7 or x is negative 2. Two different solutions. And lastly, let's find f of 2, evaluating f of 2. They're telling us x is 2, and we want to find the y value, f of 2. So I go to the graph, and I see here, when x is 2, y is 6.5. When x is 2, f of 2 is 6.5. f of 2 is 6.5.